what is entrepreneurship I'm, and I'm going to deep dive a little, but you know, what is the difference between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is something which I want to pick up. Right? So in, an entrepreneur is someone who is taking the risk on their own, right? They are going to, they are going after an idea. They need to do everything which, which is needed, right? So find people to work with, find funding, find customers, you know, then again, raise money, right? So, and then look after the operations. So it's different journey altogether. What is, what an entrepreneur is actually, right? Is, is basically there is no or low, no risk because you're actually funded by somebody else. The resources are offered by the company. You're only managing the business. So that's the, the, the downside is you're only managing the business. You're just getting salary to whatever you're doing. And then, you know, obviously you have salary. So an entrepreneur fights for the salaries of others, right? Every day so that, you know, they can give salaries to their employees, pay to their vendors on time. On the other side, an entrepreneur, you know, possibly somebody like me gets my salary on time and, you know, if, and then bonuses on time, right? So the only thing which I can do is, you know, I can probably do more than what is, whatever is expected. So, 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 so there's a, there's a big difference is there's a rule defined when you join a company, there's a rule defined to is it that entrepreneur is also questioning and adding to that rule, right? That is a big, you know, gap, which an entrepreneur needs to fill in. Right. So what the first thing which is expected when you're looking at uh, on being an entrepreneur is, you know, you need to have all these traits of an entrepreneur. So you need to have risk taking, you need to be initiate, you, you need to take initiative. You need to come with new ideas and you also need to look at how are you trying to create a positive impact right around in that environment, you know, in a certain team, in a certain business, which you are part of. I also personally believe that even employers needs to cultivate the sense of entrepreneurship within their organization because it actually adds a lot of value and reduces the burden from you because somebody else is also taking an onus on them, you know, to build more around the business, right? So I think what needs to be done is you need to understand the missions, goals, objectives of the company, you know, the, what, what are we going, going after? There are times, you know, and I have worked with a lot of startups also. There is no goalpost. There is no end of the tunnel, right? So it's just a tunnel where we are walking, all of us are walking. Nobody knows where it's going to end, right? So if, even if it's a stop gap, right, there are two tunnels, but there is a diff, you know, there is a distance between these tunnels, you know, if you know how long you need to go, right, there, there needs to be a destination also. Otherwise it just becomes a journey. So you need to be clear on what the organization is looking at, right? And how can you contribute? Obviously the, you know, it, it is about making money. It is about making impact, but what more is required, right? What are the other fields your organization is looking at though? You know, I am learning a lot within my current organization, uh, every day about new businesses. You know, there are a lot of things which are happening and I'm also learn, I, you know, because I keep interacting with a lot of startups. So I'm also learning a lot, which can be added in my current role, right? So it is, it becomes very important to understand what is happening in your organization and, you know, just, you know, don't be in, in a silo, right? So, you know, one of the biggest traits for entrepreneur is being very proactive and take ownership because as I said, you know, you are hired for a role, right? So you, you have some understanding on what is the role all about? What are you, what are, what is the expectation out of you? But if you keep doing that, right, you will be among, you know, so many people who are doing the same thing. But if you want to become the change maker, you want to become an entrepreneur, you need to identify the loopholes which are there, right? It could be something where it could be a process which needs, you know, some tweaking. It could be a revenue channel which you think can be added, right? So you can pick up that specific piece and then go after it. Right. So something which, which I definitely, you know, depending on your organization, and this is something which I've learned from my Nokri days also, is that, and I can actually share a story that when I was at Nokri, I used to, uh, and I was, because I was managing the US interrupt shift, my only engagement interaction was with finance guys, because, you know, they need to fill, you know, we, we were the sales guys, they need to fill the details in, you know, a certain system so that 
the POs can be generated and you know the money can be pumped with those POs and stuff like that. So when I left, right, I, I remember that my boss at that point time called me and said, Amit, how did you manage to get these things done? Right. And he was a veteran in that company. The difference was he never reached out to people. He always thought, you know, these are guys who are, who are supposed to do their work and you're supposed to do your work. But I used to go out, you know, meet these guys. I will, you know, I will have, you know, tea with them, keep them happy in a way that, you know, there is a relationship so that they can, they will go out of their way to do things when, then, when they were needed and also share insight because they used to work in the headquarter. So these are things which, which gives you insights, you know, what is actually happening because you will not, if you're working in a silo, right. And if you're working in a large organization, every business is a separate business, you know, every unit has a separate goal altogether, but you also need to connect with the larger goal that can only happen when you're connected with, you know, multiple people in multiple teams, right. So that becomes very relevant if you're working in a reasonably large organization. Again, this is, this is something which, which, which I learned, you know, when I joined, uh, you know, the current role is I was, I'm part of the cloud team, right? So I never had sold or, you know, worked in the cloud ecosystem, but it was always fascinating. I worked with companies, you know, kind of helping them with their go to market. But now today I'm learning about cloud and I'm actually learning a lot about what is happening because everything is moving on to cloud, right? So there, there was this learning. And all this learning also helped me to kind of understand what are the business dynamics which is happening. It's not just about me building or, you know, leading a certain product, a certain piece. I also need to understand so that I can, you know, if the gap is big, you know, I can become that big to fill that gap in terms of revenue, right? But I will only be able to do that when I know what is happening, right? So it, it also is important. And the other thing which I keep doing is I keep talking to people outside, which are specifically startups, domain experts to kind of know what is happening so that I can plug that information, plug that learning in the current game plan, which we are creating as a team. This is specifically for a lot of people who join a company, realize it's not for me, right? And then they leave what, what usually happens. And if you see there is a lot, lot of good people, you know, I've personally seen there are a lot of good people who leave companies, jump from one company to another. And everybody said that, you know, they don't like, they're not passionate. Nobody would hire them. But I also realized that a lot of these folks are very smart people, right? And they need, they probably look after, and especially, you know, the young generation is looking after that excitement in their roles, right? What is new? They want to always do new, but you can't, you know, make a track record if you keep doing new things you need to build something take it to a certain extent so that people know that you have achieved this right so as a, there has to be a goal post where you can show them that you know i was running in this marathon i reached 80 percent of this marathon i left because of so and so but you start you need to run you need to run to a certain extent if you complete that marathon great you know because then you're accepted that you can do certain strengths, right? So, so find something which you think, or, you know, in within your role, you need to, if you can't find exciting stuff every time, but what you need to do is you need to create experience. You need to create. And if you're joining a new company, you, nobody looks after, looks at a resume, right? It was just for your recruitment and it, that is done. You're in a new company. You need to create a new record. You need to, you know, build you know, a success story within that. So you need to come and create that success story with whatever, you know, tangent, whatever objective the company or the team is looking after. So, so be very specific, right? It, it is very important. And I think there are times when I personally felt that I'm not contributing enough, right? Or I'm, and I've seen other people, you know, in, in, especially when I was advising entrepreneurs, right? Because the founders are stuck with so many things. They have to raise money. They have to hire people, right? The tier two, you know, the second leadership st starts getting confused that are we doing it right or not? Because they're supposed to do things, but they, there is no handholding there, right? So you need to also bring that handholding, give them a clarity and get them to build these, you know, these uh, success stories on their own so that they get confident. 
the people who will stay with you will be people who are actually feel that they belong to that organization and not somebody who is just looking for a stop gap right or money right so that's very important so for if you are an entrepreneur if you are a business leader the very important thing which you need to do is spend time with people you are hiring right and go beyond their resumes because i personally believe that if i would you know go if you know i i probably would not be in my current role if i would have you know people would have looked at my resume because my resume is here not your typical corporate resume with you know with multi big companies and you know a pedigree and all that i have done a lot of things i have done a lot of good things i have done a lot of impact right so that was very relevant and that what you know brought me here so it's very important to have that clarity also as an individual and as a business risk taking is very important right and i have seen people who are you know who are happy with their salaries that you know there is the salary is fixed why do i need to take risk the reason you need to take risk is because you will as an as a human being there will be a time when you will start feeling bored there will be a time where you will start feeling unwanted right there will be a time where you think that it's not enough right so if you are if you want to then there will be a time where you say that you know i am happy so a lot of people i have seen have been stuck in the same organization for many years either they are too comfortable i also think that being comfortable is also not a great trait right so if you are comfortable very comfortable with the current thing then you will stop learning because everybody think that you know they have achieved something your peers will see you as you know a lot of peers which were you know where i used to work earlier people think them in as as unwanted people because now they are not doing anything they are just happy with they have been doing the same thing for many years they are happy doing the same thing i but not adding value so they will never get a quantum which the new folks are coming in and these are the guys who actually complain now that i am not getting enough visibility but there are these new guys from new colleges who are you know doing all that because you have lost that you know the sense of achievement the sense of innovation you're happy you're just or probably too happy with your current uh, you know wherever you are so you need to take that risk you need to be a un- little uncomfortable because that's how you will keep evolving and keep learning this is actually i think the most important thing which i can share right now because in a big organization you are actually working with a lot of people right and all these people are folks who are coming with a lot of experience and obviously there is a lot of ego also right human beings with a lot of experience there is a lot of ego there is a lot of expectation and there is a lot of expectation mismatch also so whenever you are going out with an idea which you think has a lot of value credibility you need to go out and identify people who are ready to you know listen to those ideas and you need to support these ideas you need to create a certain i would say a psychological angle to it rather than a logical angle because there are certain things in certain companies where you think very it's too obvious it's this is going to make us money but you don't know the entire picture right so it's very important for you to kind of understand how do you place this idea after learning what is happening in the larger ecosystem this is again something which i have learned which i keep people i respect people who have been there right so for example tarun was the founder of juno has been you know one, one of the one of the good friends and leaders i look up to because when nokri was the bin market leader you know and i am jobs was just starting off right he was at it for so many time there were times when you know nokri was doing better and you know there were but over a period of time i am jobs created his mark right high risk created his mark and then obviously nokri acquired it so these are stories which only become when you are you are adaptable you are resilient otherwise it's just difficult right you need to be very patient when you come up with the ideas you are the one who is very excited about your idea right that this is going to be game changer for me this is going to be game changer for the company for the team but there are times when you need to learn to keep it yourself because the most important part is you cannot you know just you need to understand what who is making the next move who is who is going to be your supporter who is not being going to be your support right you are you are working with a lot of dynamic situations you are working with a lot of dynamic people around you 
you also need to understand why it's important for you to place your cards right the reason being there are people everybody is you know there, there is a everybody has a certain angle when they're building this story so i'm not going to get into you know the dynamics of politics which is i think it is at times i've seen is far worse than the normal politics which we see out there so it is very important for you to kind of understand how do you place right and what you don't need to share everything to to people because you don't know how it will come back to you right and how it's going to be used against you also this actually you know people will probably will smile but this is actually very important because you know i think this will explain they know the larger landscape right if you are playing a small part and you you know of a multi- bigger game you also needs to understand how are you placed right there are times when you know people have not connected with their senior leaders and they have jumped guns and do certain things which backfired because the leaders were planning to do the same thing were supposed to give the same person you know the same role or responsibility but because that person jumped guns without even intimating the boss or their super bosses it backfired right so it's again very important to kind of understand how are you what is your boss looking at what are your seniors looking at so that you can you know align with their goals because it's not about visibility at times your own visibility at times right it's about how do you ensure that the people you are reporting into right are happy with and they will take you to places right i don't need to give you examples because i'm sure all of you know friends or probably you are you're part of that where your bosses or you are the boss who have taken your teams with you along with you because of you know the relationship which you build with your seniors or juniors so it so it becomes very important to align them and have more of a camaraderie than playing a game of visibility that who gets most visibility this again is a very important thing because you know as you are looking at becoming an entrepreneur entrepreneur there will be somebody who is you know senior to you who is also an entrepreneur leader you will and you will find them they will be the one who will be getting visibility they will be the one who will be getting a lot of accolades from the senior management because the thing beyond it right? so it becomes very important to identify somebody who understand the risk taking capability and who can actually teach patience is very important right when we go, when we come in especially when you're joining a new company you come up with the new ideas but you're expecting that things would things will change you know just like that because you have this idea you need to understand what is happening right you and all these other slides which i shared earlier basically that you know the, those ground rules which you need to understand to be very patient the things will move at their speed because there are a lot of moving you know pieces of the same puzzle which are getting aligned and you are just part of one puzzle or you are you know you are just a sub part of that part so you need to be very patient especially with time lens a lot of people expect that it would just happen like that because i'm going to bring 100 crores in the business i'm going to bring 200 crores of business or i'm going to add a new product line right which will change the dynamics within the organization it doesn't happen like that right because there are a lot of things which are at place so it's important to have resilience and patience while you're building this a lot of us take there are a lot of egos also at play when you're working with you know multiple people and it's just not about being part of a bigger corporate it also happens with you know startups and the mentality even if you're working with a startup right a lot of you are building startup and probably working with startups you would realize that the difference is the same right the mindset is the same people don't give you ownership just like that you know you people will probably not be kind when you are giving them ideas not be candid with you know or upcoming with their feedback also so you don't know if your idea is getting accepted rejected right what is happening so there are a lot of people who actually take stress on that right? you know it hits our ego we take it personally that you know how can somebody reject my great idea how can somebody not listen to my idea these two words are very important you know you can't take everything on your ego you can't take everything you know which actually becomes stressful for you and trust me you know this happens with everybody you the best of people i have seen right broken down because somebody didn't listen to them and you know just this is a humble request to especially the business leaders is 
there are times you need when you just need to listen to somebody right and just be supportive of that you don't need to respond react or adopt a certain idea but just listen to them as human beings because i think especially during covid all of us have gone through a lot right so we have become a little i think we have become probably a little more impatient you know if i can put it that way so there is a lot which we can do for others it's while it's a team game it's played by individuals so everybody is coming with you know with their own agenda and you need to work with them to support their agendas while they you are you know you are working on your own agenda of getting more visibility getting a promotion getting more salary getting the next job you know whatever that could be the major difference is that when we are looking at a businessman the businessman is looking after you know going after the money that what and how the money can be made an entrepreneur is looking at the scale right so that that's a difference or a technology entrepreneur for that matter is revenue will be made it's not about just the money for an entrepreneur right it's about it's about scale it's about impact money is also part of that but money is not the only thing for a businessman you know if i can put it you know in hindi it's galle mein paisa kitna gira right that's the ultimate thing which is a businessman looks at calculated risk taking where you so you have let's say you have an idea right which you think that can change the way your business is functioning but you don't you know you don't like your boss you know that your boss don't like these ideas right he is he is happy he is a happy go lucky person or she is a happy go lucky person you need to find somebody else you know an empathetic and an entrepreneur business leader you know who can guide you towards the journey right so it, you will you the ultimate goal for you is get somebody to listen to you when you as, as as i said though there are certain times where we just need that gratification that koi sun le aapke aapke uh, idea ko and there are also times when we have not thought about it so the risk taking you know actually the risk taking is when you are when you have a great idea but you have not thought you know thought it through which means you have not looked at the kind number of people you will require for a certain you know a goal which you want to achieve as a business person or you have not looked at what are the what is the money required for that i have seen a lot of people you know within the current organization also great ideas great people right but there they have been employees so they have a certain mindset of doing certain things right that, that this is how it can be done but they don't look at that you know how this money will flow in if i need to execute that you know so all that becomes very important so when you're looking at you know implementing anything or get any idea implemented the first thing is look at four things how are you going to achieve it what do you want what are you going to offer to your current organization if you're looking at right what is the end goal which you want to achieve and how it is going to support everybody around you right who is going to play an important role in i would you know in in your picture so if you have answers to all the four then you can go out and talk to you know boss your boss's boss whoever you think will listen to you right and be very open if they you know they take it down from get go it's okay because they have some as i said you know they have something else in in play they can't take this idea right now they probably will take it later right but taking it out is very important right so definitely go after it but be very sure of who are you pitching to and how are you pitching actually hope this answers the biggest difference when people are coming from outside india right and i work with them with from my time of talk rate so 17 odd years a lot of these guys have this mindset that we are a third world country which means that whatever they are bringing to india can be sold because there is a lot of population and there is a lot of educated population but the thing which they miss out on big time is we are a very dynamic we are more dynamic than europe in itself you know you know all these states all cities have the way we function in bangalore the way we function in mumbai the way we function in delhi is different at times right we while probably we'll, we'll we can speak english and hindi and in you know, multiple other languages so that is there is that, that was one you know and it has been a consistent 
challenge for me whenever I work with them because they come with that. We made money and good money in our respective geographies. We can do the same thing. So that is one. Secondly, they look down, not every, but a lot of them look down on us, right? As a third world country, you know, people of that country. But the things would have changed right now is they also accept that we are good at building technology. We are good at managing businesses because a lot of business leaders today is, are Indian, Indian descent. The difference of Indian companies also is the mindset is very, you know, if I can put it crudely in nature, right? So they're always about how much I can make money, right? If you think, if you're, if you start thinking not as an empathetic leader, right? Where you're, you're, you're thinking that I need to also think about my employees. I need to also think about my vendors. I also need to think about, you know, my, my clients in the best way possible. So the good experiences I had personally in terms of these things specifically has been Japan and Germany, right? Where they are, they have these processes in place. They respect each other's time. There is, and you know, time again is, a, is so time is very, in, very inconsistent for all of us. We have a different time zone altogether. We will be late and we'll never be sorry, right? So I love, while I was working with my Japanese, you know, the Japanese company, I learned that I need to be before time, like five minutes before time, but not more time, right? So I can share a very interesting thing. If you are 15 minutes early in a meeting in the Japanese, that also is not good because you are forcing them to come, you know, complete everything which they are doing or leave everything they're doing to meet you. Okay. So, you know, one thing which I learned was be on time, right? So even if I'm five minutes late, which is okay, I still send them a message, right? That I will be late. In places like Mumbai, right? People know that people will be late because of range and, you know, things like that. But nobody has this system or culture to, you know, inform the other person, intimate the other person because they probably are supposed to do something else. They can do something else while they're waiting for you. So all that, you know, these are these minute things, but are very important as impression of folks, right? So I think these are the, some things which are there. And US is the only, you know, I think where they are, they inculcate entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship as a second nature. You know, we need to do that a lot in India so that we can change the way we are looking at people, the way we are accepting people. And all the business leaders or all the entrepreneurs you will see, they, if they have worked with a corporate, you will be, they will be the outliers. You will, they will be getting more visibility because they were risk takers, right? So this can be inculcated as a business leader, as a you know, business owner also. But I think the major difference is we don't do that because we need, we also want control, right? Probably I'm talking, you know, explaining a little more, but nobody teaches us to be a team player in our schools, colleges also, right? Because all of us are competing with each other. So that is a cultural challenge. Nobody's telling us how to delegate, right? So we never delegate. We think we are best at what we are doing. But you need to be that risk taker. You said, okay, it gets, it will get screwed up. Even if I do it, if I do 10 things, it'll get screwed up because I'm not, I don't have enough time to look at everything. But let me delegate, right? Because the other person will also learn. I will also need to go for holidays at one point of time, right? If the dependency is me, I'll, I will never be able to, you know, have my me time, have my family time. So these are, these are things which we need to inculcate as business owners also. A lot of people are not able to see from outside, right? It's not about, so they are, they don't have, while they have, a, you know, a, a, the face with the business leader, but there are many, you know, nameless people who are very scientifically building those businesses, right? And they have certain command on taking decisions. If the decision making is always about, you know, the one person, if the one person is not well, right? Is and then and probably at times traveling or not in the equation, then you will see there is a lot of chaos which happens because everybody has been looking up for decision making. So my personal understanding is if you can start giving, you know, the, this, and that's the, that, that's the Lala Buddhi I was, you know, a lot of mindset I was talking about is when you want everything controlled by you, right, you will never be able to help people grow, right, your business grow, you will achieve a lot of things, right, because a lot of people love to look up, they don't want, they are not the entrepreneurs, right, so we all also need those kind of people as well. But if you want to change the game, the change the dynamics, 
you always need a second in command, right? And probably a league of good people around you. And never, you know, you never should back off by hiring smarter people than you. That's, that's another thing which I've realized, you know, they're always okay hiring smarter people because what they also do, good leaders, is that they keep learning. So that the people who are smarter than them, they still respect, not because they are they have better IQ or they are coming from the pedigree, because the guys who are hiring them, the people who are hiring them are actually, you know, better placed in terms of probably empathy, They're better placed in terms of the way they deal with people, you know, take business decisions. So it could be anything, it, not just about IQ at the end of the day, right? So that's something which needs to be built over a period of time, right? And I think I'm also learning the same thing. So I never get, I never think that if, I, if people that are in my team, there are team members who are smarter than me, you know, I should, I should fear them, right? Or I should feel uncomfortable around them. I have my own strengths, right? And I keep, I'll keep building my own strengths. I will keep building my own new skills, right? So that'll keep me better, and you know, I'll respect it because of them, and not just, I think, fight for a fight for the game of visibility again. I volunteer or, you know, I was also a coach of a lot of people who are looking at managing these things. So I can talk about a certain business leader, right, who is, who, who at a certain stage realized that she is not getting heard in her organization, right? And being a woman, you know, there, there are different challenges which, which she was facing. And she knew that she can become the next leader, you know, she can get the right promotion. But she also knew that there are a lot of people around her who probably will not be happy if that happens. So, so one thing which, you know, and some of these things, which, which are kind of, when we used to brainstorm together, I kind of held her was, let's find an easy target. Let's not, you know, let's not go after something which is larger than life. So what we also try to do at times is, you know, we try to be, make a big plan, right? That, this plan will going to not only change my life, but, you know, the companies and all that. And there are times when people love that, okay, you know, so you know that people, that person will get visibility because they are bringing a certain kind of business or a certain product like. But what we worked together was how she can just turn around a process, right, which was actually consuming a lot of man hours for their company. And then work with not her immediate boss, immediate supervisor, but somebody who was managing a different division who was supposed to lead, right, or manage that that you know certain piece. So she worked with her, with that person, that you know, a different business unit leader, and that business leader ensured that she gets visibility, right? And and none of the team members, her, her peers, knew actually what this is actually something which she you know instigated. So when the when actually the mail went out to everyone in that, you know, that this is what something which we have done. We are saving thousands of man hours in the next so many years. And she was one of the, you know, key person. She got visibility. She got recognized, right? And I think this year she probably will get that promotion, right? She was not getting because of, you know, a lot of these individual ego tussles between that between them right so it's just about how do you place yourself and the other thing which she kept doing which i used to tell her is that the people who are around you who you think are your peers and friends they also have their you know their own agenda as i said you know very candidly i'm telling you so you need to also understand who can take this personally who cannot who probably is actually your friend there right so it actually works so you need to very strategically see to navigate all this, right? And it's not easy, trust me, it's not easy. So my team, you know, uh, very interestingly, none of these guys work with me. They are, we, we have a diverse, somebody sits in Delhi, somebody sits in a different office, right? So I'm the one who is actually getting a lot of visibility because I sit in the headquarters. So what is what I have tried to do is, you know, giving them work and then telling my superiors that, you know, this work was done by these guys. I don't want to say that, you know, some many gear. I never plan to do that because I also want to, you know, get these guys comfortable to a situation that they don't feel threatened by me as, you know, their reporting boss saying that, you know, he is the one who is actually taking all the credit. If my team is working, if my team 
is doing right things, right? Obviously, I'm going to get the credit. And it's for me to ensure that, you know, they also get visibility, right? So that is very important. So I, whenever there is a team call, you know, things, stuff like that, I ensure that my team speaks. I also ensure, and, you know, I've seen a lot of other business leaders also. They ensure that they give, you know, their juniors to participate while they're, you know, showcasing presentation and all that. They don't hoard the visibility. It, I think as a business leader, you need to be comfortable in your shoes. that you know, I can do more. Right, because right. human beings, as human beings, you know, we if you and I'm saying that you know, as a human being myself, there are times when I can also feel worried that you know, if I'm doing the right things, will my boss you know showcase? But the good part is my boss is also this you know think the same thing. So he's not the one who will hold you know. So I'm getting enough visibility in that ecosystem. I'm going to talk. I'm getting to talk to a lot of people. I'm learning because of you know the person I report to. So there is a lot of scope there. And if you can become that person anywhere you go, right, you're, you're, you're changing jobs or let's say you start a new business, that ecosystem or mindset which you have created will automatically come with you. Your DNA is about, you know, ensuring that people get, because anyways, as a business leader, you will get visibility. If you are the entrepreneur, the funding is in your name. But uh, visibility right? And that's, and you need to be creative how you can do that for them. I think lead by example, that's the first thing, right? You, if you see, we, when we look at, right, and this is the upbringing thing. If you see people, you know, if you see people in a line, you know, at places and everybody be part of that line is because there is somebody who has set the example. That line lagani hai. But if you you've also seen, you know, that when we are at a and especially in, in big cities, somebody has you know crossed the red light. You will see a lot of people copying that person. Because right. wo kar tha, kyun nahi kar tha. right? So that's the mindset. You will, you know, we don't stop ourselves for doing the wrong things also. So it's also always about what the example you can set for others, right? If it's a good example, then people you know, and if they are getting appreciated for the good example, people will say that, yeah, let me replicate that and build that. If you're doing a wrong example and people are ready to copy you or people are copying that, then, you know, that it's a big problem as an, in a corporate. So, and secondly, you need to make them comfortable. Something which I do very openly is I don't, you know, I don't believe. And thankfully, my team also we don't believe in this, you know, the entire game of politics. So we are, we stand for each other, right? That's a beauty because all of us are coming with a lot of experience, right? And a lot of corporate experience. So we understand the, the importance of standing for each other as a team, right? So that's something which people need to inculcate, right? As, as the head of that, you know, I would say a family, you need to inculcate that habit, right? That you need to be stay strong, you need to work and somebody is doing right, you know, let's support that person. That's a habit. That's a part of the DNA which needs to be created. It, it just not doesn't come naturally to all of us, right? So if you can do that, setting an example as the leader or as a peer, I think that's the first win which you can do. When you're going with a plan, right? And especially something which is which new, which you think that, you know, you're getting a buy-in. My recommendation is, in this is a fair balance, there are times where you need to have a verbal buy-in, which is okay. There are times when you need to have a written buy-in. You know? What I mean is, if you're asking us, you know, your senior or superior that this is going to make sense, right? This is going to change. This process change will help us grow, you know, so and so. And they said, yeah, great, let's do this. And you think that you need to talk to multiple stakeholders within and outside the organization, put that in writing because if it, it's a fail safe for you, right? So if you got a buy-in from your boss or your superior saying that, you know, this is something which I'm giving you a, you know, thumbs up, go ahead, try this. But if you have a verbal buy-in, there are times when there's a, there's a, I never said yes or no, right? And obviously you can't record these calls or conversations, right? So if you have a written buy-in, you can at least have some proof, right? And then you can build on that, that, you know, this is what I'm doing. And the other thing which we keep missing out on is that when we have this yes, we don't keep informing them also that, you know, this is the next step. A client confirmed, you know, this customer confirmation. 
So all this, you know, when you keep informing them, you're not just saying that you know, I'm reporting into you, you're actually, you know, strategically ensuring that they are getting confident about you, your decisions. And the next time when you come up with new idea, they will be more receptive because you have created this SOP with setup. I said, I that, you know, the next step, I, took, I informed, we spoke to some customers, customers very happy with this pitch, right? Let's talk to more people. So this, all this buy-in is very important, right? All this information sharing is very important so that they, be, they make, they become more confident while you are, you're, while you're, you know, building on a new idea.